I'm really happy that uh, that you guys have uh, come to, to hear a little bit about um, the state of API integration. Um, my name is Ross Garrett. Uh, I'm with a company called Cloud Elements that uh, is, is a small Denver-based company that I'm not going to tell you anything about uh, during the next 25 minutes. Um, but uh, if you'd like to learn, if you'd like to learn a little more uh, about Cloud Elements, um, please feel free to come find me. Um, look me up on the app. Uh, schedule some time to chat either today or tomorrow. Um, I'd be I'd be very happy to tell you a little bit more about what we do. Um, one of the things that we do uh, is is produce this report called the the State of API Integration Report. Um, who, by show of hands, has uh, seen, heard of, or even read uh, this report? I've got a couple of hands only in the room. That's quite sad. Well, hopefully, uh, we can uh, change that a little bit today. Um, my intention, so the report is, uh, you know, we've ha been running for two years, and the third year is upcoming. Um, we, we publish in March, typically. Uh, so, so the data I'm going to walk through today um, really speaks more to the information and the data uh, that we collected um, for 2018's report, which was published um, um, this past March. Um, but uh, we do have a new one coming out. Um, in 25 minutes, it's kind of hard to cover all of the things in this report. It is reasonably lengthy. Um, so I've picked out a few uh, particular data points that I think are worth chewing over. Um, we're going to talk about those some. Um, hopefully, you'll have some questions for me. And we'll try to get through as much interesting data from the report as we possibly can in, uh, in 25 minutes. Um, with that, I suppose, um, you know, let me tell you exactly what we'll cover uh, whilst you perhaps punch this uh, bit.ly link into your phones or, or, or computers. You can go to, to that link, S-A-I-R-18, um, and get access to the 2018 version. Um, really, what we wanted to do was look at the, the sort of evolution of, of the world of APIs. This report isn't so much about having APIs or doing APIs or building APIs as much as, as it's about um, the pain that still exists when people are trying to integrate um, the world of APIs. Um, I decided within, within this particular uh, version of, of the, the talk, I would talk more about the notion of building platforms, not products, and what that means to your API strategy, what that means Um, oh, it's back. It's up. Okay. Uh, some of the, the challenges facing developers, so we're kind of looking forward. Um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that um, you know, continue to be a pain, continue to be something that we should think about um, when, when servicing developers. Actually, you know, um, this builds quite nicely on, on some of what uh, the opening keynotes talked about this morning, right? The notion of, of generating value that both consumers, application consumers, and API developers or providers um, both had to um, see value in the work they were doing. And so I think some of the challenges we'll, we'll touch on and um, speak to that. Um, and, and then finally, if you make it all the way to the end, there's a real free cash money um, opportunity at the end you'll be very excited about. Okay, so let me tell you about the report. This is not just the, the you know, random mutterings of Ross Garrett and, and a few other contributors that I'm going to talk about, um, but it actually comes mainly from you, right? The API practitioners, developers, providers out there that are actually um, doing something useful with APIs and, and then, you know, informing us uh, based on a bunch of questions that we ask, the things that still cause you pain, the, the, you know, the areas where the market and the industry and the providers you care about um, could improve. Um, we surveyed hundreds of developers across a whole bunch of, of countries all over the world. Um, this uh, included 27 distinct industries. Um, we had feedback from CIOs, CTOs, product owners, developers, um, and ultimately, um, Altogether, the people that we surveyed um, represent about 200,000 development days of building over 4,500 integrations uh, in, in 2017. 
So it was mostly based on data you provided to us. Um, but it wasn't just that. Um, we also had a few other um, experts in the space. Kin at the back of the room uh, has been um, a contributor to this report um, two years in a row. Um, and uh, we also had Mark Boyd and Isabel Monet, who uh, is also here with 42 Crunch um, uh, to contribute this year in their, their respective areas of expertise. Um, so, so that's kind of a little bit about what it is, how we got to where we are, um, and, and hopefully proof enough that it's worth a read This well, you've got this far. Um, I guess we'll dive straight in then and talk about, about the API landscape. I think one of the things that we learned um, from, from this year's data and from the, re the responses that we got um, from this year's survey is that, um, you know, the notion of whether or not APIs are important to your business um, is, is a long forgotten conversation for most, right? In, in most cases, it's kind of a given. If you don't have an API, somebody said today, that feature or service doesn't exist. And I think um, that's absolutely true, right? If uh, it's kind of like back in the day, if you didn't have a website, you didn't exist. That's, that's the world we live in. I don't need to preach to the choir on that one. Um, and so, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of evolution to think about, but um, the world of APIs is really, um, you know, solidified. There's a very solid ground in which um, we're building interesting products and we're starting to learn new things as we go along. So they're, they're, they've become a necessity um, for people to build um, applications for their, uh, in order to do business with partners, et cetera, et cetera. When asked, and this is you know, starting to look at some of the statistics that we collected, when asked, um, about 85% of, of those that we asked um, said that API integration is critical to their business strategy. Um, I don't really care so much about the 85% then in this conversation. I'm interested in the other 15%. This is the largest API days ever with more than 3,000 people registered. Um, that would suggest that there's still some people out there, continuing, considering this, this event continues to grow, there are still people out there just starting their journey, perhaps, in the world of APIs. It means that there's at least 15% of the world that we haven't reached yet, so we have to um, talk louder. Um, I hope it's that you know, we, we've still got some work to do, and it's not just uh, API fatigue. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you've gone through a whole bunch of talks and sessions, so I'm hoping, I hope I don't contribute to API fatigue um, right now. Um, but ultimately, right, this notion that um, APIs are critical um, to business is, is really solidified. As I said, the other concept that uh, we wanted to, to, to um, dig into a little bit is this notion of whether you should consider yourself um, to be a product provider and have APIs that represent your product, or whether you consider yourself to be a platform provider. Um, again, perhaps by show of hands, would you consider your business or the business of your customers today to be primarily and consciously a platform strategy? Yes. Okay. So that's interesting. Um, there was... Uh, Maybe less than 10% of the room put their hand up there. When we asked this uh, of, of, of the survey, um, we got an almost 50-50 response. And I think it's because for many people, perhaps we've overloaded the term you know, platform. Perhaps we talk about the notion of a platform strategy far too much. Um, but uh, I think the, the, the results are kind of split down the middle here, partly because people haven't made a conscious choice one way or the other, right? They're responding to this question sort of as a gut, gut feel, like, oh, it is a platform or it isn't a platform, and, and, and so I answer one way or the other. Um, if, and we, in the, the upcoming version of the survey, we're, we're changing this around a little bit, what I really want to know is the why part here. So have you consciously decided that being a platform or not being a platform was the right decision for your business. Um, I think that's uh, an important nuance that we didn't capture and something I'm looking forward to learning um, for, for the upcoming version. But um, ultimately, I think it's important that we do consciously decide. That there's, there's, there's opportunities ahead if you do um, consciously think about what it means to be a platform provider and, and how you want to structure your business, 
your product portfolio, the APIs that you offer, and, and the people that you enable around those APIs um, in order to, to sort of serve that purpose of being a platform provider. One of the things um, that perhaps helps take us down that journey towards becoming a platform is to think beyond um, the APIs themselves. Um, what I've been telling organizations recently is that, you know, as, as the number of, of applications increases, there's 150,000 plus um, cloud-based software products out there today, each of which uh, have an API, each of those being um, wildly different from one another, representing data quite differently from one another. And, and, and that market over the past just three, four years has grown 30 to 40 times. What hasn't grown 30 to 40 times is the number of developers in the world over the same period. And so that would suggest to me that um, the addressable market of people available to consume and interact with or even care about your API um, isn't growing anywhere near the rate as the number of people that are providing an API. And so we need to think perhaps differently. If we wanted to be a platform, if we wanted to consciously decide that a platform strategy is right for our business, then how do we reach more people? How do we put um, API integration into the hands of more people? And this notion of, of low code um, and no code perhaps uh, options uh, starts to become more interesting or important. So we asked um, the, you know, if, for, from those that uh, considered themselves a platform provider, only one third said that they offered pre-built integrations in that sort of space, right? That low code, no code, the pre-built stuff for, for um, non-technical users. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, you know, they're sending a whole bunch of business to Zapier, for example but rather that they're, they're thinking beyond simply having an open API, right? This notion of just having an open API and having a developer program and, 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 and wiping your hands of it and saying, well, innovation will exist over there uh, and I don't need to worry anymore um, isn't really true. And I think we all know that. Um, but then what steps have we taken to, to actually fuel um, a new world of, of, of innovation, and are we making it easier for non-technical users or easier for non-technical users to do something useful with our APIs? The answer is not enough. Um, so then what are people doing to, to drive API adoption? Of course, you know, the people had to select here from a predefined list, and, and you could select um, all of the things that applied to you. In this case, Right, it's no surprise that most people said, well, the first step we took obviously was open up an API. But there's a bunch of other things that we can do. And um, somebody today, I think it was Daryl actually, was talking about, uh, um, the, about SDK, SDKs. And, and there's a sort of continued desire, I think, to make it as easy as possible for developers to consume APIs in the language in which um, it's, it's most convenient to them, and SDKs are a big part of that. Um, maybe it is those pre-built integration for non-technical non users. Um, and, and maybe it's going one step beyond just an open API, but a platform where developers can build things is also useful. And we've seen this um, from the likes of Google and Amazon for sure. Um, so there's a lot of different ways in which um, you can drive API adoption and reach that greater addressable market. And that was really the whole point of this question. What we wanted to do was understand, um, you know, where people like really tr uh, having problems here. Um, large organizations I talk to, large financial organizations uh, even, that you'd think there'd be pent up demand to have access to their APIs. Banking's been a big topic um, during today's uh, conference. Um, they, they're still struggling, right? They've, they've done in their minds everything right. They've done everything that we API practitioners and leaders are telling them to do, and yet adoption is still poor. So is that um, a problem with their API design support, or is it the addressable market? What other things can we do? Okay, so the API um, evolution. Um, I think in this, this set of um, data I'm going to show you is really to help understand that, um, you know, we've done a lot. APIs have made so many things easier. We haven't made it perfect. 
um, there's, there's definitely lots of areas that we can improve. Um, when I look at this and see that um, on average, the number of days to, um, to build a new API integration is 30, 60 days, and in some cases considerably more than that, that's interesting. I would also want to point out that um, the word integration here is kind of important, right? We're not saying make an API call and get a 200 okay. I'm saying build something useful with an API. Um, and, and the fact that it can take as, as much as 30 days in some cases is, um, has got to be very frustrating. So there's things still that we can do to, to, to make life easier. Is it documentation? Is it the age-old problem of authentication and authorization? Are we doing all of the right things to make, um, to make it easier and for developers? Um, and so when we look at um, what the survey tells us in, in terms of um, how do we make life easier, we get, again, some interesting data here. This notion of, of customized APIs is what I really want to talk about. Um, that simply having one API that serves all consumers equally and all use cases equally is perhaps no longer reality. We've seen this in other large organizations. Netflix would be a good example of this. Um, they have for some years now talked about the fact that um, a one-size-fits-all approach to their API strategy didn't really serve them well. Right? They, they needed to adapt um, the API surface to match the consumer. It's on television to an Apple TV and, and, uh, or an iPad or some other um, device. And so instead of having a single API that, that uh, was supposed to work across everything, they were, they've basically constructed a different um, front end, a different API experience um, for each of those constituencies. And I think we're going to see more and more of that, hopefully in many of the, the large organizations, large enterprises that are um, uh, speaking at this conference this year, um, they'll talk a little bit about their experiences of you know, moving away from a single API layer that just serves everybody equally. I don't think that's, that's possible anymore. One of the things we sort of see an evolution. Um, and then the final thing that I, I, I wanted to touch on in terms of um, you know, improvements is, is really to think about the business improvement that you can get by, um, by offering a good API integration experience. This, is base, this, this chart, um, perhaps a little complicated to read, is basically saying that um, users will upgrade or renew if the product uh, that they're um, interacting with offers integration. Now this, we didn't pre-describe the, the hows or the what's. Does it have an API might be um, good enough here. But it's become increasingly clear that, the, um, that um, end users expect to have an integration experience out of the box in the products that they use. Whether this is the, the very familiar example I always use is Slack, right? That's the sort of experience that people have now come to expect. Slack is perhaps the most um, well-known example of a platform strategy. In fact, the, the folks from Slack go out on the road and talk about um, you know, why you probably should not consider yourself a platform because it's hard, right? It's taken them a long time to, um, to build up an ecosystem around their product, um, and they had to think critically about how they wanted to do that. Um, but ultimately, integration is the thing that brings us back, right? It's because that product can be part of, or that platform can be part of all of the business processes um, that, we, uh, that we have as teams or, or organizations. Um, so integration can genuinely move the needle. It's not just a um, technical science project. Um, this translates to real business and real revenue, churn reduction, is, is, a, is like the watchword of, of any SaaS product. Churn is the silent killer. And, and if you can do anything to reduce churn, um, you should take those steps. And integration can be one of those things. So in the very little time I have left, uh, there was a couple of, of areas in this uh, past year's report that um, represent challenges or, or perhaps further evolution. Um, it's good timing because we just had Eric on stage talking about um, event-driven um, APIs. Um, 
there's a whole bunch of options here. I think um, I had, was at the very, very back of the room, so it was very hard for me to see or, or hear, actually. Um, but uh, I'm not going to retread some of this ground for those of you that saw the, the last presentation. But obviously, there's lots of options here. And, and developers have really expressed a preference um, for event-driven um, or event-oriented integration versus more traditional request response models. We should respond to that. When we look at the number of APIs in our, uh, th that we support in our product, um, there are <clears throat> uh, a very small number of them that natively offer um, an eventing framework of some kind. Um, and developers have, uh, have, have uh, expressed preference for webhooks in, in some uh, surveys. Uh, this is by Wufu. Um, API security is another area. Um, I think uh, I just wanted to touch upon some uh, comments that I'm sure Isabel, if you've seen her, t her presentation today, um, she's been talking, she's been a sort of prolific advocate for um, DevSecOps and the idea of bringing security into the beginnings of your API um, projects. The fact that it shouldn't be a bolt-on thing at the end. And, and, the, and because we've kind of thought of it as this thing that we do at the end, it's made it a crappy experience. Um, it's, it's created much of the pain that exists, many of the security holes that exist, because um, we tack it on at the end. It needs to be thought of at the very beginning um, of, uh, of any API project or API integration project. And then the, a topic for tomorrow. We're going to hear a lot about GraphQL tomorrow. Um, there is a very good chance that um, GraphQL um, is you know, the, one of the, the leading lights as we look towards the future. Um, it'll be very interesting to hear some of the, the speakers tomorrow, I think in this room actually talk um, in more detail about that. So again, I'll not, I'll not bore you with um, my uneducated opinions. Um, I promised you free money. Um, so we're gonna, get, we're gonna get straight to that in the one minute I think um, that I that I have left um, the uh, the just a quick reminder of this if you didn't get this link at the very beginning the the state of API integration report um, 18 available here um, and we are right now um, uh, we have a report a, a survey out to collect as much data as possible for 2019's edition um, you can win uh, 439 uh, and 19 cents. This is 439 euro, 19 cents. Um, weird number, huh? That is uh, 500 bucks uh, US, uh, translated to euro as of about 11 a.m. this morning. Um, I thought that might be more appropriate. Um, the, uh, so you, if you complete the survey, I'm about to show you the link. If you complete the survey uh, before December 20th, you'll be entered to win um, a, uh, a Visa gift card with $500 on it or um, the equivalent of 439 euro. Um, maybe more by then. Who knows uh, what could have happened uh, between now and December 20th. Um, this, is, this is the link. Go to um, CE Survey 19 uh, at Bitly and you'll get access uh, to that report. It's not a two minute submission. It'll take you a few minutes, maybe three or four minutes to get through all of that. But it's worth the investment of time because it helps uh, other people like you learn about the state of API integration, which is really our whole intention. Um, we, uh, we really want to deliver value to API practitioners, to people that are new, and we want to get the 15% of people that still haven't realized that API integration and APIs are strategic to their business um, to wake up and, and, and smell the coffee, so to speak. Um, with that, uh, if people have any questions, I'd be happy uh, to take them. Thank you.